I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I was like, that seems like a cool idea. Let me change it a little bit and make a YouTube video. Yeah. So today we're gonna to talk about immersion cooling. It's a thing that people do sometimes, or most of the time with oil. Have they immersion cooled anything with anything other than oil? 3M used to have a thing called floor inert back in the day that like was really shitty for the ozone layer or whatever. Nice. That some supercomputers used. But. So recently, or I guess maybe not recently, but sometime within the last decade, 3M came out with a liquid called 3M Novec, which is what, Kai? Actually, I think it came out in like the early 90s or something, but... All right, sick. So like 20 years ago, <laughs> 3M came out with a wacky liquid called 3M Novec. What is that? That's uh, a fluorinated hydrocarbon compound with a low boiling point. Basically, it bubbles. And uh, apparently, it's not horrible for the environment like the last liquid they came out with. And so we're going to put it in a computer, which is what a bunch of people, or I guess some people, have done for server systems to keep them keep large server systems cool by basically dunking rows of servers in this massive bath of this expensive liquid. Yeah, I believe it's been used in a Bitcoin mine. Really? Like mining operation because they have such high power densities there. And also there was a something showing it off at CES where they had like a prototype server in it, but it wasn't an actual product as far as I know. True. Is there any like on the market product for like PCs that use the 3M immersion cooling? Not that I'm aware of. Nice. Well, we don't know what we're doing, so we're probably not gonna try to develop this to be sold, but it'll be a fun project for us. Why is this better than oil cooling, Kai? Because oil cooling is just a direct heat transfer and the low boiling point Novik does phase change cooling where it evaporates on the hot parts. And the act of evaporation, the phase change actually helps carry the heat away faster. So there's something called a vapor pressure of uh, liquids. It has to do with where they boil, I guess. And it's going to have a positive pressure in relation to the atmosphere. So we need to make a like, pressure sealed vessel for it to be in. I don't think the pressure is that crazy, but we still don't want it to escape. So basically the idea, or basically how the larger servers work, is they have a big bath of liquid. It looks like this. this, is a bath. And then inside the bath, they dunk the servers long ways, and they all have handles at the top. And then this is filled with the 3M Novec liquid. And then above these baths, there's copper coils and the liquid evaporates onto the coils and condenses and then falls back into the bath of liquid, basically creating a small water cycle, which is similar to how heat pipes work. Heat pipes and normal air-cooled heat sinks use the same concept where there's a liquid inside. It evaporates on the hot part and then condenses on the cold part and just kind of goes in a circle there. That's why they're all sealed up. So we just want to take the same idea and expand it into an entire computer instead of just a small pipe inside of it. So what we're going to do is basically, the, the, the other problem with these giant server systems is if you know anything about how big a server is, you'd realize that this, this is the foot, they're about six feet tall. And our system is going to be roughly 16 inches tall. Is that to scale, John? Not at all. That's why I put the measurements there. <laughs> Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to machine out a cavity like that, and then the entire top part of the aluminum block, we're going to machine ridges in so that it becomes one massive heat sink that sits above the bath of liquid. And in here, we're going to put a tiny motherboard, we're going to strip down a graphics card, we're going to hide a power supply somewhere. Now we're going to take one of these, which is a bulkhead pass-through. We're going to organize all of our little connectors in it, and then we're going to fill all of the empty space with epoxy, and then that will keep the system pressurized. Hopefully. 
in theory. Realistically, we really need a hermetically sealed bulkhead connector, but they're all military products and cost like $1,000 or something, so. And like I said, we're on a budget. Yeah. So that's gonna be shoved into the side of this thing around here, and all of the wires are gonna come out the side. And then behind the ridges that we machine into this, we're gonna drill from the top down a bunch of tubes, or basically just holes, and then put screw caps into the top of them to give the liquid somewhere to go and condense and then rain back down into the bath which will go over, go about here i'm going to fill it up by stuffing a funnel into one of the pipes before we screw it up and then get our little old-timey whiskey bottle full of 3m novec fill it up and seal it shut So that's the concept. Kai, what are we gonna, what kind of parts are we gonna use? Well, since we wanna have the volume inside as small as possible, we need the smallest parts possible. So, mini ITX motherboard, and then there's some AMD Vega graphics cards that are pretty small, and uh, that's, that's the idea. Subscribe to our channels, my dudes. <laughs>